Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. Tim, what's going on, brother? Very well. Yeah, very well indeed. Look all relaxed, hat on backwards, chilling at home during COVID lockdown. Yeah, buddy. Uh, buddy. It's funny, I was just saying a moment ago, my hairdresser texted me um, yesterday, saying, I'm taking bookings from the 15th of July, and I'm like, ah. I don't think I need that. I'm not even texting back yet. Come on here. And I'm like, oh, God, my hair looks shit. <laughs> I'm putting her hat on. So I'll send him a text message. I'll reply to him today. Clearly, it's a, it's a need. It's funny. In the States, hairdressers are usually for women. And guys go to a barber or oh, maybe really? a stylist. But usually you think of hairdressers for women. Yeah. Oh, barbers have only just started to become big in the UK. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, the past couple of years. Interesting. Cool. Uh, So Tim, I want to talk a little bit about the subject of hypergamy and it's something that's talked about in, you know, dating and relationships and things of that nature. I think it applies to a lot of the guys a couple guys in the brotherhood were talking about hypergamy and how that works. Um, So I think it's an interesting topic for the guys uh, to go through today. Well, I don't know what it is. So do (laughs) it. So hypergamy is this idea that it's uh, within a woman's kind of, I'm going to butcher it and I'll give you my understanding of it, but we'll work through it uh, together, is the idea and concept that a woman's innate desire is always to up level, right? Yep. Always to go, you're laughing because you're like, okay, I know what this is now. I just, yeah, I just Googled it. It's basically resourcefulness, right? Yeah. So it's a woman's, you know, kind of innate need or desire or, you know, uh, the idea is, it's also anthropological, is that the woman's always looking to up-level to the best man possible. Now, this isn't just at, at one time in her life, you know, from 18 to 23 or 23 to 30 or whatever. Um, this is an always-on thing for her subconsciously. So, you know, for the guys listening to this, this applies to your wife, this applies to your girlfriend, your miss, whatever. Uh, hypergamy, and I've seen this play out once I started learning about it. I'm like, oh, this makes total sense. You know, mm-hmm. owning a gym in my 20s, you know, I, had, I was around a lot of women all, all the time. And so you could see this idea of hypergamy coming through of where women are looking for more of the alpha, right? And the alpha comes in, a, in, in different ways. The more macho man um, can be somewhat of an alpha, but also the more intelligent, uh, the more resource, resourceful, as you said, you know, income and, and ways to protect her or provide. And hypergamy comes in different stages depending on, you know, the age of the woman, right? So a 23-year-old woman may not be as interested in a man with money, but might be more interested in a guy that looks really good, whereas as a woman ages, you know, her desires to up-level, so to speak, increase, right, as her needs increase. Like, how do I protect my children? who's the best to bear offspring with and et cetera. And this falls into play with, you know, some of our teachings and the things that we train the guys with is, you know, a lot of guys get married and they let themselves go. Mm -hmm. They let their bodies go. They let their, their education go. Like they're learning, they're real deep learning of who they are as men. Um, And they submit themselves to society, to their families, to their wives, et cetera. And their wife starts looking outside. Now, she may not cheat, but she starts naturally desiring that other guy. Maybe the guy on the TV show, and maybe the guy at the office, and maybe the guy at the grocery store. Um, so this is the idea of hypergamy, really in a nutshell. We could talk about it for hours, uh, just my understanding of it, let alone you know, really getting into the depths of it. So what's your experience with hypergamy with the guys? Yeah, it's interesting. I'm just reflecting on it because, yeah, it can go many ways, right? It reminds me of one of the conversations uh, we've spoken about before, in fact. The guy said to me, Tim, you know, my wife has everything. I've provided her everything she ever wanted. She's got the house. She can buy what she wants. She's got money. We live in a great area. We go on vacations. And she's left me for a guy that cannot give her anything. This guy's on disability. But, he in his wife's eyes could also give her everything his presence emotional support and connection um so you know in terms of hypergamy she had traded 
upwards per se, if you want to call it that, uh, emotionally, you know, because she'd, she'd obviously reached the point where she had, um, and maybe her kids were a little bit older, so they required a little bit less financial uh, support than they once did. And for her, she'd experienced financial resourcefulness, but the one thing really lacking for her was emotional resourcefulness. Her husband at the time wasn't providing her or meeting her emotional needs. So as a result, you know, she can only be in that for so long, or she can choose to be in it forever, or that it can become a very slow death for anyone, right? Um, so naturally she chose to do something about it and she went and got those emotional needs met by a guy who her husband would look at. If you put these guys next to one another, you know, stood them next to one another, you would say on face-to-face value more than likely that he looked more resourceful financially. But there was a, there was a different conversation going on in his wife's head. So, um, yeah, I, I totally get this. I, you see it playing out all the time. And I think you said something really uh, brilliant about how men submit themselves. They get into a relationship and they think, right, that's me now. Now I've got to provide got to go and work hard and then they'll make money. Then they'll get a bigger house, which causes them to work even harder. They'll get a bigger car, which means they have to work harder again. They'll just constantly be this, this never ending chasing the elusive carrot on the stick. And in the process, they stop growing. They lose their passions. They lose their direction. They lose energy. They gain weight. They, yeah, they, they become a guy that their wife probably, wouldn't have chosen at the beginning and and i'm not you know obviously every guy doesn't follow this but you know i'm just speaking in the context of the men that we typically speak with and i get it because at the same time you know that's what they've been fed is the thing to do right that's what we've been fed in society as the typical life you follow this plan you work for this number of years you retire you build you get a house and you get a mortgage and you do this and the other and all the rest of it but you know clearly that pathway that they've been led to believe doesn't doesn't serve them in in, in this particular conversation anyway because in in essence their stock value decreases right um in which case yeah watch out for some hypergamy <laughs> So, you know, it's an interesting concept and, and I believe it to be one to be true. We, we, we've seen it in the conversations we've had with hundreds of men. And again, back, uh, not as much today, but back in the day when, you know, again, owning a gym, you know, because you may not know, Tim, I, my gym was two stories and the second story was all offices where I ran other companies, but you could hear all the conversations below and it was personal training. So the women would just talk about their husbands and boyfriends and what they were doing, what they liked and didn't like and other people. So you kind of pick this up, but the cool thing about this in my eyes, you know, and in, the, and in the eyes of the men that we coach is, you know, by being the best man you can be, right? It's kind of the be all you can be type slogan, but by being the powerful man that you are, that's inside of you and, and taking care of yourself and, and going through, you know, your health, your wealth, you know, your relationships, uh, your business and taking care of all areas uh, and of course, self, you actually, you know, play right into hypergamy. In other words, mm-hmm. you become the prize your wife wants and the other women, right? Which is always a great thing. You know, it's always a cool thing now that Summer's here as being the guy. Obviously, I live in a residential area, as you know, Tim. Uh, but, you know, mowing the lawn without your shirt off and you watch the the other housewives walk by as they're walking the dog, which they normally don't walk the dog at that time or what have you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a, you know, it's a great feeling for the men and guys, if you're taking care of yourself, if you're, if you're using the, the methodologies, the coil and other things that we teach, hypergamy actually plays right into your favor and not against it. And I mm. think that is a really cool thing that most men miss. You know, the conversation that I've heard over and over again by guys that haven't been through our program is, is that women are this, that, and the other bitches, what have you, and the hypergamy, they're self-centered, or what ha- you know, all these things. Now, the guys that are saying this, for the most part, right, they've, they've gotten out of shape, they're not handling you know, their own personal needs, and they're not handling the needs of their families, right? And so, therefore, they become less desirable in the eyes of their wife and probably the eyes of other women around them, you know? And so they look at this whole idea of hypergamy as, as something that's horrible 
where I personally see it as something that's an advantage, right? It's something that's actually amazing. Um, mm. It allows you to keep that spark flying. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's definitely the road less traveled. It reminds me of this picture. Uh, so for those listening on the phone, Tim's got, he's just showed a picture on his phone of two men, same age. One guy's, you know, tan and a six pack. And the other guy's got the huge beer belly that you kind of see like he's been eating pizza and beer all day. Yeah. So true though, right? You know, two very different paths. Whether or not those guys are the same age, I think it depicts this idea of hypergamy very well. You know, um, and I think as well, it's important because um, a lot of guys don't realize either what's driving them to be so, um, to sacrifice so much for, for business, sacrifice themselves, their health, their happiness, their relationships. Because for the most part, often underneath it, they're, they're trying to prove themselves. Um, you know, it's a bit, you know, whether you agree with that or not, I'm just basing that on the hundreds literally hundreds if not thousands of men that we've spoken with and worked with over the past few years um and it's the same every time and that doesn't mean it's there's anything wrong with that but the point is um when you're able to realize that and understand how to switch that around then like you said, it plays right into this whole idea of hypergamy, right? Because you stop living for some day in the future. And uh, yeah, it's definitely the road less traveled. You, you stand out. A, a million, you know, what was I going to say there? You, st- <laughs> you stand out, part. I can't remember what the saying was, but you stand out. It's like the black sheep, right? You completely stand out in the field because most guys go down that path. Um, so in terms of, your wife, for example, at that point, you know, why would she then want to look elsewhere when you're taking care of yourself, regardless whether you've got a six pack or not, just investing in your own health and value in your health and saying no to the beer and the pizza and instead eating something healthy, that in itself is attractive. It's a sign of a man who values himself and his body um, just by you having passions, right? And going and playing golf or whatever it is, and then coming back and feeling full that in itself is is attractive. And then combine that with having purpose and direction in business and being able to meet your wife's needs. And yeah, it's almost like, well, you become powerful. No, you know, without any pun intended, but you do. Well, and, that, and that's the great thing about it, right? Is by being your best self, going after the things that you love and want to do, by taking care of yourself, which betters yourself, you get to have more energy, live longer, more vitality, which we all want. Right. And then really just, you know, it sounds cliche, but living your best life is really what it comes down to. Right. That allows you to go up the rung of this hypergamy protocol. It's the guys that, you know, and we've been stuck in it and most men have, and I get it where you're grinding it out for your family. You're, you know, getting up early in the morning, going straight to work. You're grabbing a bar or whatever you can for food, a bagel, um, and like 64 ounces of coffee and you're getting it done all day. And at night you come home, you're exhausted and it's easy to go out with the guys and grab pizza and beer or pizza and beer at home or whatever. And that becomes your new cycle, right? Mm. And you justify it because you're doing it for something, but you lose your soul a little bit along that path, right? Mm. You lose your soul and you start to go down the ladder, right? You gain weight, you get more lethargic, you you know, you don't want to do things because you're so tired. It becomes less fun for you. And that's where this hypergamy comes in um, as a concept is if the women are naturally always looking for that, the next rung up the ladder, you know, it doesn't mean your wife's going to do anything, but it's their nature to look up that next ladder, right? The next rung, so to speak. Well, if you're taking care of yourself, you're doing the things like you mentioned, playing golf, or for me, it's going hiking, running, or something outdoors. Um, Maybe it's playing the guitar, whatever it is you want to do, that becomes sexy right? That becomes mm-hmm. the next rung up the ladder. And you probably are going to get pushback, guys. You're going to get pushback probably in, in, if you start changing these things and these habits. Um, but those are tests. Those are tests of you. And it's also, you know, for a lot of the women out there, they don't want to lose you because, you know, they're kind of hyper gaming alarm bells start clinging off. And like, mm-hmm. Wait a minute. <laughs> I had this guy uh, under my thumb and now what's going to happen? Uh, mm-hmm. So that's where it gets really interesting. And you can be very playful with that. Mm, so true so true yeah and this is i think that 
in reflection, the livers a king system, obviously it's the first step we give the guys. Um, that always creates, say always, very, very often creates desire within uh, the wife for the man because he's basically doing this, isn't he? He's starting to raise his stock price again. Um, so by default, it changes routine. She's like, ooh, what's going on over there? Peaks her curiosity. Um, he starts to say no a lot more. He start, stops being needy and desperate to get her attention because now he's filling his own cup. Because by default, when your stock price is low because you're exhausted, not only do you reach for the beer and the pizza and all the rest of things to try and fill you up, often the guys also become needy as well um, for the wife because they want her to fill them up too. Um, which obviously isn't sexy or attractive. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's a great topic. It's a great topic. I googled it when we jumped on, and there's some interesting videos that have popped up. I'm definitely going to take a look at them. Yeah, well, it's absolutely fascinating, and I think you know this ties right back into you know jump starting your relationship and kind of reigniting it. And you and I were talking about that um, and going through it. Um, so, guys, interesting topic to go through. And of course, if you're interested in reigniting your relationship. Uh, we do have the reignite cheat sheet. Just go over to the powerfulman.com forward slash bonus. Uh, that's the powerfulman.com forward slash bonus and grab that reignite cheat sheet. It's something that we talk about quite often. And I think it really applies to this topic. Uh, Tim, that's another episode in the wrap for us. Guys, we'll see you next time on the Powerful Man Show. And until then, have an amazing week.